Hey guys, today we're going to talk about setting up Vim for C++ development um, using a language server and a Vim plugin called COC, which is a Vim plugin that lets us do all these cool things like auto-completion, symbol renames, error handling, and stuff like that. Um, and in order to use COC, we have to first figure out which language we're going to be using it for. And in our case, this is C++, so we have to install a backing language server um, and then configure it in COC um, like so and we'll get to that. So for our choice of language servers um, we can use CCLS or CLangD um, and I personally prefer CCLS because I found that it works better for me uh, and all you have to do in ArchBase system is install it using Pacman but for other OS's you might have to build it from source and CCLS has a guide on how to do that. Um, the next thing we do is we install COC, um, and we can use the release branch here. So um, we go into our NeoVim config, and we basically use the vim plug command, same as here, and then we type plug install. And I've already got it installed, but in your case, it should start with the installation here. Once we have COC installed, we need to Cop configure it so that it can talk to CCLS and use CCLS for all C++ um, options that it needs to do. So we, when you launch a Vim instance and you can type coc config, it'll open the coc config um, path here. And we can just take the language server option configuration, which is copied from here. Um, they didn't add the extra uh, brackets around it, but you need to add that in order to make it work. And you save it, and you're almost good to go. One final thing we have to do is COC by default doesn't actually provide um, any key bindings by just including the plugin, so you have to configure it. They do have an example Vim configuration, um, this massive thing right here. And you can just copy paste this and we'll go over some of this in, in the later part of the video but for now I think to start with you should just copy paste it honestly um, and once you have that installed you can open up a C++ file um, I have a sample C++ file here it uses some elements from C++ 17 like the idea of um, initializing namespaces together in and if I hover over it you can see that C this is COC surfacing a CCLS warning, which is that nested namespace definition is a C++ extension. Um, and similarly, std optional is another um, C++ 17 um, option. In order to enable that, all we have to do is in the root folder of our project, we can create a .ccls file. And all we have to do is copy something like this. Oops. All we have to do is copy something like this over, and we can paste it here. And now if we open main.cpp, you'll see that there is no um, issue here. And if I do std, it actually auto-completes optional for me because it now knows about optional. Um, I can do, it is an, blah is an optional, so it will show me the methods for optional. When I hit the dot, it auto-shows me, and then I can, I can, scroll through these and choose something like that. <clears throat> so it's working with C17 features for us right now. And you can basically start seeing the basic functionality of COC. Um, note that this doesn't actually integrate with your own build or release setup. This is just for coding. You want to see some diagnostics and you want to see some auto completion. And so if I just mess everything up here, it'll start showing warnings. And you can see all the warnings in a file using space a and use and these these key bindings are given by the by the Vim example Vim configuration that we copied. So anyways, back to diagnostics. So you can see all the diagnostics by using space a. It'll show me all of them. And I can also navigate through them with um, bracket g, and this will show me. Yep, I can go back, and if I save this. It will. So now I have two. Um, one is where it's used, and one it is where I define it. So let's see if we can fix this. All right, and things are fixed now. Cool. 
Um, yeah, tab by default does completion for us, um, and we can use just I can do blah dot and tab will do completion for us if it isn't showing by default. Um, we have gd for jump to definition, so I'm on b. Um, b will actually not jump to definition. I can do gr because b is an object of type blah, so I can use br to jump, uh, sorry, gr, uh, gy to jump to the type definition. But if I'm on the object type itself, if I do gd, it'll jump to that type definition to definition. I can use gd on foo and we'll jump to foo here. Um, and this works across files as well, so let me actually do that. Let me create a file called bar.h and let's set it to have once and let's actually take this entire thing here and put it here. Let's take the optional as well, put it here and let's do include um, bar.h. Alright. Cool. Yep, so our header file is actually having issues understanding this is a C17 file. And the reason for that is if you saw our CCLS file, it said to include enabled C17 for CPP files. If we do percent %h here, and I think we have to relaunch. Uh, All right. This takes care of things for us, and we can do. Um, let's open the C source file as well. So now um, it doesn't understand C yet because it doesn't have IO stream for us, and let's add that. All right, so now we have a header file and a source file that includes that header files. Um, and now, if we do gd on this foo, it will actually navigate to the header file itself. So you can do control O to go back to the call stack. So if I do GD again, it goes back here. That works. I can do GD on blah, it'll take to, I can do GY on blah, B, it'll take to the definition. So you can see that it works across files. A few other things we can take a look at. Um, we have K for showing documentation. So I'm calling foo, but I want to know, I want to see the documentation associated with it. I can do shift K. Um, to see the documentation, and there's nothing there right now, but if I open up blah.h and let's say I add some documentation, who is a really cool function, and I close this, and now if I do shift k, it will show the documentation associated with the function as well. So when I do b.foo, it just shows the function, but if I use shift k on it, it will show that foo is a really cool function. And let's see what else. Leader RN for renaming. I want to rename foo to something else, so I can do leader RN and I can do foo do right so and so it changed it in two buffers. You, you'll see that at the bottom COC notified us. And if we do save all, it actually say writes to blah.h as well because it has blah.h open in a buffer. If I do GD here, you can see that it renamed it in blah as well. And we have some nice bindings for selection inside classes and functions, and this is informed by, so regularly, like uh, I can use, uh, basically, this is informed by CCLS. So if I use VI and if I use the, the, the curly brackets, it selects inside this, um, but I can also use VIF to select inside the function itself, irrespective of curly braces, right? Like if I had something like this here, um, and I want to select just this thing inside these curly braces, I could do VI curly brace and it selects inside the curly brace. But if I want to select the entire function, I can use VIF to select the function inside or VAF to select the function inclusive of the extra outer stuff. So, um, and this works for classes as well. So I can use VIF, it's not inside the function, but I can use VIC to select inside the class and VAC to select inside the class inclusive. And let's take a look at where all of these are defined. Right? And these are all defined inside the these 
file lines that we copied from um, coc config and i like to hide this honestly because it's a lot um, i use marker based folding in my vim files and i just set up a marker here to start the cock and then end this and then i can use zc and zo to open and close these um, when i don't have to see them so let's go through these a little bit and we'll refer back to the stuff that we talked about in the video um, some of this is just making things work, command height, like you'll see that this height for status lines was bumped up to 2 because it's easier a lot of times to display messages. Um, tab for completion, um, control space can also trigger completion, um, CR auto, auto selects the first completion and you can see that basically if I do b.foo or b. Um, let's say boo, right? So I can just do type enter and it'll auto complete it without even selecting the item itself. Um, we talked about going back and forth on diagnostics. We talked about code navigation, shift K to show documentation, um, leader RN for renaming. Um, Cog does support some formatting options. I personally don't use it much, but um, it's there. Um, I'll talk about the the highlight symbol as well in a second, but um, let's see. Code actions. Um, there's not much code actions here beyond that highlight here um, because we don't have anything defined um, for C++ here. And mapping function and class text objects. This is nice, like I talked about, selecting inside the function and the class itself. Um, let's see. Some, and this is showing all diagnostics, managing extensions, showing commands, um, space C to show all COC commands and stuff like that. So um, these are nice. Oh, and one final thing. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that the web browser view was zoomed out so much, so um, wouldn't look nice on small screens. I have this all uploaded to codevion.github.io, and then you can click the C++ COC.nvim setup, and this should be available for you. Um, and it'll be linked down below in the video. Once again, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.